Hello, this is Amjad Al Mandalawi from Baghdad, Iraq, showing in this presentation a personal collection of cases of coronary anomalies. It's not meant to be a long lecture with fancy classification, but I'll try to show some cases that may cover the scope of the condition. There are many normal variants which has a clinical which has no clinical significance, but sometimes may pose some difficulties in engagement or intervention. In this case, this is a separate origin of the RCA and the coronal branch, which is a normal variant. A short left main stem or a separate circ and LID is considered a common normal variant. The left main stem may divide into two branches, the LID and the circumflex, and this is the usual, or it may trifurcate into a third branch, which is called the ramus intermedius. And in very rare condition, it quadrifurcate. The RCA usually bifurcate at the crux of the heart into the PDA and the PLB. But in some cases, there is a high bifurcation and more proximal. In this case, the, the bifurcation is the, at the middle part of the RCA. While in this second case, the bifurcation is more proximal. Anomalous origin of the cirque from the right is the most common anomaly and by itself is usually benign. In this patient, the cirque arises from the proximal RCA and the patient has significant atherosclerosis. This is the LIO view. It shows the cirque taking a long distance from the RCA to this part, which is the posterior lateral part. While in the RAO view, the position of the circ overlaps with the RCA. So it's important to know the course of each normal artery and what it supplies so that we can identify the vessel when it is anomalous. This is another case. The circ arises separately from the right sinus of Valsalva near the osseum of the RCA. What makes suspicion of anomalous cirque is that the left system, you, in the left system, you can see a long left main stem and an empty area, which is supplied, which is supposed to be supplied by the cirque. This case is peculiar because the anomalous cirque was dominant. In this another case, the cirque looks to be totally occluded. The patient had atherosclerosis and there is some stump here. And the area supplied by the cirque is empty. But engagement of the RCA showed the cirque anomalous arising from the right sinus of Valsalva and it has a critical lesion at the isthmus part. This is a case of congenital absence of the left circumflex. The case shows a long left main stem with absence of the circumflex. One would expect the cirque to be arising anomalously from the right sinus or from the right uh, coronary artery. However, engagement of the RCA didn't show the usual anomalous cirque, but instead it showed a superdominant RCA where the PLV continues upward to supply the area of the circumflex, that is the posterior lateral area. Now we come to the most important anomaly because in some variants it has a clinical impor importance since it may be associated with the risk of second sudden cardiac death. And this is the left main stem arising from the right sinus of Valsalva. In this case, engagement of the left sinus of Valsalva showed only a tiny vessel. It actually arised from the right sinus of Valsalva. This is a cranial view. Here we can see a septal branch, and this is the LID, and there is the circumflex. In the lateral view, again, this is the LID, and this is the circumflex. Then comes the areocaudal view, which is important view to differentiate the course of the vessel, which we will discuss in a minute. 
left main stem arising from the right is classified according to the course of the vessel into five types the prepulmonic type which is the anterior course the retroaortic course which is posterior and the important part one is the interarterial course running between the major vessels the, the pulmonary and the aorta the fourth one is the septal course and the fifth one is the retrocardiac course Nowadays, with the presence of CT angio, it's easy to identify the course of the vessel. But by angiography, we can have some hint. And this, is, this depends on what is called the eye sign, seen in RIO or RIO caudal view. The anterior course, when in the anterior course, the eye sign, the upper rim is formed by the left main stem, and the lower rim is formed by the circumflex. While in the end, in the reverse is seen in the septal course, where the left main stem forms the lower rim and the septal branch arises from it, and the circumflex form the upper rim of the eye. So in the previous case, it is mostly a septal course because the left main stem forming the lower rim of the eye sign and the circumflex, this is the circ, forming the upper rim of the eye sign. This is another case when, where it also appears to have a septal course, but it's difficult to decide and this can be solved now by CT angiography. In a third case, this is also anomalous left from the right taking a long distance. This is an LIO view where the RCA has a critical lesion or atherosclerotic lesion and the left main arising from the right sinus, from the right proximal part of the RCA. And this is the cranial view. In the RIO caudal view, it shows the left main stem. This is the left main forming the upper rim and the circumflex forming the lower rim. So it's, uh, we can assume that this is the anterior course. In another case of left from the right, but the circ and the LID have separate origins. This is the circumflex and here the LID. This is the same case with selective engagement of the LID. And in this view, we can see all three arteries, the RCA, the circumflex here, and this is the LID. This is a fifth case where no artery is seen from the left sinus of Valsalva. At the right sinus, we can see the RCA and the left system, but a very small circ. This is the RCA and this is the left system arising from the right sinus of Valsalva. This is a lateral view in lower magnification. You can see the left system. This is the LED, and this is the area of the circ. It looks to be empty. In this case, the RCA was again super dominant and supply, supplying the area of the circumflex. And this view shows both arteries, the RCA supplying the distal circ and the left main stem. This is a case of congenital absence of the left main stem. We can see a, a single artery that gives rise to the RCA, and this is the alley of you. The RCA continues at the circ and as LID. This is the AP cranial view of the same. You can see this is the circ and this is the LID, all arising from a single artery. And this is an RIO view. The other important anomaly is where the circ arises from the left sinus of Valsalva. This, RCA, this RCA is an example. 
it poses difficulties in engagement, especially if PCI is needed. In this case, diagnostic angiodone, but every guiding catheter failed to give a good support, except for the Jetkin left 3.5 by right radial approach. I repeat, it's good to engage anomalous RCA arising from the left sinus of Valsalva by using Jetkin left 3.5 by right radial approach. This is another case shows how to engage it. This is a Jetkin left 3.5. Initially, you start by engaging the left, then disengage with counterclockwise rotation, you can engage the anomalous right coronary artery. PCI was done in this patient by the same approach. Of course, you can use an amplus left catheter or multipurpose catheter to engage this anomalous artery. In another anomaly, sometimes we can find a high origin of the RCA. In this case, you can see the RCA is arising from the sinus of Valsalva, but from its upper part. This is LIO view and this is an RIO view. This case shows both arteries arising, shows the RCA arising from the ascending aorta, actually, not from the sinus of Valsalva. This is RIO view, here is the sinus, and here is the RCA from the ascending aorta. This is an LIO view. These are the sinuses, and this is the RCA arising from the ascending aorta. In this case, both arteries arise from the ascending aorta. Initial view, it looks like normal origin from the sinus of Valsalva. But you can see here, this view, it shows the left system arising just above the sinotubular junction. And this is a depiction of this case. The same case showed the RCA arising just above the sinotubular junction, and it was also anomalous in another sense that it was arising near the left coronary artery. Another anomaly is the RCA when the RCA arising from the LID. You can see this is the RCA arising from the mid part or proximal part of the LID. This is apicranial view and this is the RIO caudal view. This is the RCA. This is another case of RCA arising from the LID. This is the RCA from the mid part of LID. And the PDA is actually arising from the distal LID. Now we come to a condition where there are two LIDs. There are different classifications. Some of them are fancy. We won't go into them, but we'll present what is simple and the practical. First of all, we have to, to see what is called split LID, which is actually a normal variant. You can see two LIDs running along the interventricular groove. One is supplying the septal branches and the other supplying the diagonal branches. This is called split LID. This is another case of split LID. And in this case, the other LID is subtotally occluded and is faintly visible. So this is one and the other one with subtotal occlusion running alongside the first one. Now we come to what is called the real dual LID. And in this classification, you should have two parts of LID. One is long and the other is short LID. A simple classification divides this into four types. The type one, the short LID, ends shortly in the interventricular groove, while the long one run on the left side of the interventricular groove and then enter near the apex. In type 2, it runs along the right side of the interventricular group. In type 3, it runs intramural course, I mean the long LID, 
run a short distance intramural course and then reappear distally in the interventricular groove. While type 4, the short LED run normally in the anterior interventricular groove while the long LED arises from the RCA. <coughs> this case shows the type 4 LED. Here is the apicranial view, it shows a lesion in this branch. In the lateral view, it shows a missing LED. And one might, might conclude that this is a case of total occlusion of the LID. Engagement of the right coronary artery showed the RCA arising from the, the LID, long LID arising from the RCA. This is RIO view and this is the LID. This is the cranial view. This is the LID running in the interventricular group but arising from the RCA. So it's important not to miss type 4 as a total occlusion. This is another case. This is the LED, a short one, and the long one is arising from the RCA and then running into the interventricular groove. Our impression is that type 4 is less common, but it is more recognizable. This is a type 1 dual LED where the long LED run left to the right across the left interventricular groove while the short LED run in the normal course. Type 3 LED is difficult to realize and identify. We think this is a case of type 3 LED. This is the short LED and this one is the long LED. It runs some distance here from here to here intramural course and then appear distally in the interventricular groove. And by this, we conclude our collection of cases of anomalous coronary arteries hope to be used as a minor reference for you. And thank you.